Hey, what's good, Self-Direct Investors, and welcome back to another episode of ETFs Explained. If you are new to the channel, my name is Jordan, and I'm the mind behind Make More Capital, the financial education brand that hopes to make everyone a little bit more financially literate. And today we're going to talk about investing in water through ETFs. Now, I just wanted to highlight a few things um, and, and reasoning as to why this might be a good decision going forward as a precious resource and a commodity. Uh, but before I, I start, I would recommend if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. That way you don't miss any new videos. Or uh, I would recommend checking out my recent one, my series, Reality Check Cannabis in 2020, on um, the history of cannabis and the potential of investing in that market going forward. Um, but that episode or that series is finishing up, so you can always watch that. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to catch any new episodes that I put out. Otherwise, if you enjoy this video as we're going through it, please make sure you give it a like. It really helps out my channel, and I appreciate that. And last thing before we start, if you've not opened up your self-directed tax-free investing account with Quest Trade, there is a link in the bio to do so, and you get $50 free dollars of, uh, to trade with if you do so. Now, that being said, without further ado, we're going to dive in. Now, um, if you ever see, saw the movie The Big Short, which is the the great movie written by oh, I forget the guy's name, um, but about the 2008 financial crisis. Um, and Michael Burry, played by Christian Bale, was the man who saw it coming and predicted it. Well, the good thing about that, or why how that relates to this, is that Michael Burry is now in real life investing in water, and um, the evidence shows that he and other Aqua investors are onto something because, of course, water is an extremely extremely precious, um, the most valuable resource on this planet, but it's finite. Uh, and, you know, if fresh water is what we need to drink, uh, we have, you know, and I'm pretty sure it's only like 2% or 5% of the world is, is fresh water. Now, don't quote me on that, but I know it's very small compared to the, the overwhelming amount of salt water that is expensive, which requires desalination in order to turn it into drinking water. But that is the case. Like, we're, um, there is a lot less drinking water available than most people think. And when you consider that water, for example, takes 872 gallons to create one gallon of wine or over 2,000 gallons of water to make one pound of chocolate. Um, so 70% of the earth is covered in water, only 0.76% is fresh water. Okay, so my 5% fresh water is, is, is a very over uh, overestimation. So 0.76% is fresh water. Um, and yeah, so basically it's very eye-opening, and I, I recently came across a video I would recommend checking out Daniel Pronk, the YouTuber. Um, that uh, he, he does great financial breakdowns uh, and does investment content. But he did a, a video I'll put in the description about the global water crisis. And so when you look into that, you can actually find this uh, WRI.org. Uh, it shows the Beta Aqueduct tool to, to check out. And we can look here at the water stress that we are currently seeing in the world right now. Baseline water stress measures the r ratio of total water withdrawals to available renewable sources and groundwater supplies. So where the color is a lot darker, there is a lot more competition to get access to this water. And where it is not as dark, that is where countries have a lot more water so they don't. there's no need to compete uh, to withdraw it from the natural reserves. So just when you consider that there are a lot of countries that might you know, either we don't have the data, which is in gray, or we can see that there is a lot of competition that is going to go on. And as you can imagine, over time, this is probably going to increase. And just searching this, I found this this interactive tool from Google that lists all these aquifers that seem to be either uh, at very low levels or in, in some sort of, you know, they're on here for a reason, just to say that these water reserves are running low. Um, and this is apparently an active water crisis that we're in. So, you know, personally, I think this is better to know and to get ahead. And as, as a, you know, as a millennial investor or a self-direct investor in 2020, and if you're good with saving your money and you're responsible with it, you don't want to be spending it and wasting it on stuff, right? You want to be able to invest it in things that might actually make you money, but also go a lot further in, in helping the planet, probably improve the circumstances so we can leave it behind for future generations. I would imagine that so. Um, and that is why water is actually a terrific opportunity. So how does investing in it work? I just wanted to highlight that um, obviously you can't invest in You're not going to get a jug of water brought, brought to you at home or anything like that, but you can invest in the water rights. And a great way to do that is invest in these low cost exchange traded funds and that is what we specialize in in these ETF breakdowns. So um, just wanted to show you that and give you a bit of a background, but we're going to look at four uh, ETFs today. The first is First Truck Water, First Trust Water ETF on the New York Stock Exchange. The ticker is FIW. The second is Invesco Water Resource ETF on the NASDAQ under PHO. 
Then Invesco also has PIO, which is their global water ETF. So this one is their US water resources. This one is the global water ETF. This one also trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker PIO. And then lastly, we have CWW, uh, which is a global water index, but this one is also available can to Canadians at CWW.to. So I wanted to bring these up. We're just going to walk through them quickly. Um, but as you can see, I've, I've put them all to the maximum since they've been introduced. Uh, 2007 was, was First Trust. Uh, it came out at $20 a share. And the companies that they are invested in are, are now up to, well, the, the total value is up to $64.94 a share for this ETF. So clearly over time, they, there, there is growth. And we've, we've, we can see that by looking at the charts. Um, the Invesco... PHO started out at $15.45, has grown to $42.48 a share. So that does mean the companies inside the ETFs that we will take a look at are obviously making profitable choices with their with their businesses and, and solving hopefully solving problems that will lead to more access to water for as, as many people as possible going forward and, and not less. Um, and uh, the PIO, the global one, has not performed as well as some of the others. But this one, CWW, has done quite well, especially since um, the global recession in 2008, where it seemed to hit a bottom of about 10 bucks, and you'd be up four times your money uh, since then with some dividends uh, to show for it, and then some. So let's jump into the first one, First Trust, just to show how like how different the user experience is. This is a bit of an older ETF, or this is just an older website format versus iShares, which has made it really nice and has a nice user experience and more interactive. So it's obviously more fun to kind of do your research through these. Nonetheless, you can find what you're looking for. The objective strategy is is this is an exchange traded fund and it's to seek the investment results that correspond generally to the price and the yield uh, before fees and expenses of an equity index called the SIE Clean Edge Water Index. So that is the index that this tracks. The SIE Clean, Wa Clean Edge Water Index is a modified market cap weighted index compromised of exchange listed companies that derive a substantial portion of their revenues from the potable and wastewater industry. So as we progress, there is going to be more industry growth that's going to come, like desalinization I mentioned before um, is, is, a, is a new industry and th that's growing as well. As you can create these desalination plants that cost a lot of money to make, but over time as you get better at making them, those costs to run and operate go down. And that increases competition and allows more people to get into that. So that's a consideration, you know, in the, in the future going forward, desalination. Uh, so taking salted water from the ocean and taking the salt out of it, making it fresh and drinkable, that's one uh, possibility. And that's something that I'm quite interested in. And again, that, that's to mention to Daniel Pronk, recommend it to him for sharing that with me. But for potable and wastewater industry, this also, these would be companies that are focused on um, just getting clean, making sure that water is clean. So testing water, making it clean, and then getting water out there. Uh, and at least just making sure water is flowing in and being used where it's necessary. Uh, so we take a look. Uh, this one is trades on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, the inception price when it came out was $20 a share. So basically, since inception, uh, as mentioned before, it's done quite well, but I think we can highlight the main things that we want to look for is the average annual return since inception, the MER, and the dividend. So the expense ratio for this one is 0.55%, which is quite good. Um, again, because this is a little more niche than the S&P 500, you're going to have higher management expense ratios. Uh, but 0 0.55 is pretty respectable as long as it's able to return, you know, more than 7%. That's how you can comp compound your money quick enough. And um, so a lot of these numbers, it's just, it's not as clean to look through. It's unfortunate. Um, but so let's dig down into the holdings. What companies are inside of this ETF? Um, inside of the First Trust Water ETF, we have Algonquin Power, Xylem, American Waterworks Company, Danaher Corporations, um, IDEX, Lab, Agilent, and, and these others. Now, the thing is, I don't know a lot about a lot of these companies specifically, so if you did want to actually invest in the CTF, I would recommend taking a look at some of those companies. Just visit their website, see what they're about, uh, and that way you can get a, an understanding of what you're investing, and obviously that, that's something that should be mandatory when you're investing, but that, that's always a recommendation, and, and as you get o better over time at understanding what you're investing in, that is how you can find individual companies that you can you know, diversify your portfolio with and potentially try to get more capital appreciation and growth is finding good companies within solid ETFs and investing in them separately. But so if we take a look um, basically at the diversification of this ETF, we have industrials. So 53.93% of what it's invested in 
are uh, in the industrial industry, then utilities, then we have healthcare, then we have materials and information technology, consumer staples. So how utilities might work, this would be getting water through the, the underground systems, plumbing and, and into your homes, things like that. Healthcare might be how water is used, conserved or treated in hospitals, um, you know, distributed. There, There's a plethora of opportunity out there. So it's nice to know that, um, you know, as any new investor, you want to do more research, though, of course, and, and find out what you're actually getting into. But this is a good way for you to start learning about new opportunities. And as you actively learn, it's going to branch out um, your ability to just pick up knowledge and seek out opportunities, or at least find opportunities like that. So let's look at the performance, though, because that's what matters. And since the inception, it has done 9.46%, which is pretty great. Uh, in the past 10 years, 13.8%. And again, the MER is 0 0.55. So if you subtract that, you're still getting pretty much, you know, you're just getting just under 9% um, since inception, or at least in the last 10 years, five years, you're getting a great return, much better than you would get with active funds, most likely, uh, you know, if you just went to the bank on the corner, like on the street corner kind of thing. So um, definitely want to be finding your ETFs on your own, because that's how you're actually going to get wealthy and be able to retire on time, as opposed to you know, getting that reference from your friend at the bank. Nonetheless, um, the fund has done very, very well, which is nice to see. And the last thing I wanted to look for, which I haven't found here, I think it might be um, above here, was in dividends. So the nice thing is that dividends are paid out. I can't see when it's paid out. The yield is 1.26, but it's about $0.09 cent a share. So again, if you buy um, 100 shares, you're getting $0.09 cents times 100. I apologize, my math on the go is not going to be that good to, to pull that off. I'm not even going to try. But I, the one thing I cannot see is the distribution frequency. Um, seems like I might just pay it out once a year. Nonetheless, it does have a dividend that comes with it, so that will always uh, attribute to the growth. So that is FIW, First Trust Water ETF. So a good thing to know is it is returning over 8%, uh, at least over the past 10 years, 5 years, and the management expense ratio is um, 0.55%. The one thing I would recommend looking into as well is just how consistently the dividend yield has been paid out if this is an ETF that you want to invest in. Now, going forward, let's look at Invesco Water Resources ETF. So we're going to do these two quickly just because we, we have the two of them and they're pretty much the same, well, the same um, asset management company behind it. But so we'll first look at Invesco Water Resources. So this one is cost $42.50 a share. And basically, if we want to take a look, it tracks the NASDAQ and there's the management fee. The expense ratio that we're looking for to compete with that 0.55% is 0.6%. So um, it is a little bit higher than First Trust Water. However, if we look at its performance, it has done you know relatively, uh, comparatively well to First Trust. So not to say that one has done significantly better than the other. However, since the fund inception and actually over the past 10, five years, it seems First Trust has performed better than PHO. Or sorry, I'll use the tickers. FIW, FIW has performed better than PHO. Um, and yeah, unfortunately in the last year, th last year and year to date has not done great. Um, but what was the other thing I wanted to look for? They do not make it easy, this old school kind of user experience. I want to find where the dividend payouts are, but um, companies, that, that would be next on my radar. So if we want to look in here, again, um, I'm not familiar with a lot of these companies, but this is the best way for you to understand and feel more comfortable with an ETF that you might invest in is to at least look through the companies that, that are, you know, make up the top 10 holdings. Because if this ETF only holds uh, 36 companies, you want to make sure that the top ones where most of your money is put in is, is in a good place, right? So the geographic location, 97% is in the U.S., 2% uh, is actually in Brazil, and 0.15% is in the Cayman Islands. And this one is broken up into 49% industrials, 22% utilities, healthcare materials, and information technology. So very similar to FIW. That is PHO. Um, and yeah, wow, there's not a lot of information given here about the dividend, but you can see that there is a small dividend given. So that is just a bonus on top. But if we compare PHO to FIW, um, PHO has 0.05% more in the management expense ratio. Therefore, you just lose that 0.05 more every year that you hold over time. So it seems right, right now, First Trust Water might be the best choice uh, comparing factors. Now, if we jump over to take a look at the Invesco Global, Global Water ETF, we can see that the total expense ratio is 0.75. So this one is a whole 0.2% 
a whole 0.20% more than FIW, and 0.15% more than PHO. So right there, um, obviously it's nice to see that your, your, um, your investment will be diversified globally, but you are, you know, losing a bit, you're losing a good amount of returns over time if you plan to hold this for a very long time. Um, and it, one thing to notice about some of these ETFs is that they are trading at pretty high multiples right now. Um, the price to earnings ratio is at 29 uh, PIO is at 26, and of course, when you're looking at a sweet spot, 10 to 20 is ideal. 15 would be right in the middle, but you know, so anything above there is pushing it, just showing that it is over a little bit overbought. Um, and <laughs> ironically, yes, PIO has not done nearly as well as PHO since inception. Um, since inception, which was in, it doesn't actually say when 2012. Yes, it appears 2012. Um, well, no, it shouldn't be 2012 because then it would have done a little bit better. Nonetheless, since inception, 2.57. Uh, yeah, that would make more sense. That sounds like it's 2010. That's the gist of it. Anyways, so the 10-year return has been 7.49, but then again, if you subtract 0.75, you're getting under 7% return, and that's unfortunately just not ideal, and I don't think <laughs> that that's not what you want to, to have to be able to compound your money at a, at a quick enough rate. But let's see what's in this inside the CTF compared. Danaher, which seems to be, as we've seen so far, the top water company that these ETFs are, are after. Um, Jabera, Ecolab, Viola, Ferguson, American Waterworks, Roper. Um, but this one's a lot more diversified. So that's one thing that you might be willing to pay more, but you do feel better knowing that your money is separated in, into more places and into more baskets. Uh, but for example, where PHO holds 36 companies inside, still diversified, PIO holds 43. And they are throughout all of these countries as well and diversified in these different uh, spaces. So uh, again, based on the factors, so the average annual return since inception and the fee uh, definitely seems like FIW is still the top pick out of these ones so far. But lastly, let's take a look at CWW, which is the iShares Global Water Index ETF. One share is $42.50. This one trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. So um, this year it is up 7%, which is quite nice compared to the performance of some of these last ones over the in the current year. But this seeks to replicate the performance of the S&P Global Water Index. So there is there are, again, many indexes for many different industries and measure anything that you can measure really out there in the economy. So... Uh, where First Trust tracks the SIE Clean Edge Water Index, this one tracks the S&P Global Water Index net of expenses. So this ex ex this ETF gives you exposure to 50, um, 50 companies in the developed markets selecting on the basis of relative importance to the global water industry, of importance, sorry, to the global water industry. Exposure to different segments of the water industry, so water utilities, infrastructure companies, water equipment and material companies and can be used to help diversify a portfolio uh, with an express view of the global water on it, global water equities. So, I mean, if, if you, seriously strange to think, but if you wouldn't have, if you don't Google global water crisis, sadly, because the news isn't really out to help or ed educate you or anything like that, you're not going to see that there's, you know, yeah, there's an underlying global water crisis that we are going through and that some countries are going to struggle with a lot more than others. So, I just think it's so important that being an investor actually makes you just a bit more aware of things and that way you can actually be more, you know, have more empathy for things going on and, and understand immigration and, you know, refugees, people having to leave their homes. It's not because they want to leave, it's because they have to, you know, they're out, out of water. So anyway, I'm not going to get too off track, but just say it's a good thing to know that, you know, putting your money in these places as well as an investor makes you feel better about putting it into into companies that are harming the planet and at least giving, you know, giving our kids a better shot at, at bearable summers and, and bearable winters as well in the future. Nonetheless, um, since inception, when we can check the inception date, 2007, it is at 7.55%, which uh, is, is, is fairly decent from for most investments. Again, you'll compound it about every 10 years at that rate, so it's not bad. Uh, but since the last 10 years, since 2010, it's done 12.99. In the last five years, it's done 11.6. In the last three years, it's done 10.56. Uh, and in this past current one year, it's done 10.56. So this has actually been a fantastic ETF, and I wish I would have come across it earlier. Um, now, it is on the Toronto Stock Exchange, though, and I imagine there is an American one that um, does track the S&P Global Water Index. But again, the main things you want to look for is um, consistent average annual returns that, that are going to allow you to compound your money fast enough plus the low MER that's going to make sure you keep enough, uh, keep more of your money. But 
Um, yes, this one's on the Toronto Stock Exchange, and it holds 50 companies inside of it. So it's it's a bit it's quite a bit more diversified than all of these ones as well. And it does uh, it is eligible for registered plans. It does allow the drip, and this these dividends are paid out quarterly. So every quarter you're getting dividends of about 20 cents a share. That's a really nice distribution yield um, compared to the other ones, which is quite nice. And the PE ratio is sitting at 26, a little bit lower than 28 and 29 and some of those other ETFs. Um, but I, I do really like the fact that you're getting 20 cents per dividend, you know, four times a year. That, that's that's pretty awesome. Um, I'm going to consider adding this ETF to my watch list and, and, and buying in it uh, potentially making it my third and final ETF in my three ETF portfolio. Um, but again, I would want to wait for the price to drop at some point, and I, I know it might not, but, and here, while we're at it, let's see how the dividends payouts have varied over the year. So in 2018, it was paying out 25 cents, then 18 cents, then 59 cents, then 7 cents, then 24, 17, 7, 5, and again, the, the dividends payout, the dividend payouts are usually reduced when the economy is not doing as great, but this is a good sign that even when the economy might have struggled, they didn't stop paying their dividend. They just reduced it, and they, they did keep paying it out. That's, that's extremely promising, I think, to see um, in an ETF as well. But uh, nonetheless, the, the most important things we need to look out for are the management expense ratio, 0.66%. So it is, um, unfortunately, 11, 0.11% more than FIW um, and 6% more than PHO, although it is 10% less uh, or 9% less than PIO. So again, you would just want to over time, figure out whether this is worthwhile for you to give up 0.66% in order to get fairly decent returns. Uh, and if you ask me, just based on my view going through these ETFs, it seems like this one has consistently done done the best out of all of them in, in the last 10 years also. But um, again, depends if you're in Canada, you, you would want to probably invest in CWW. However, if you're in the US, it's probably easier for you to just directly invest in PHO or FIW, for example. Now, let's see what's in this one, though. Um, so the top 10 holdings inside of this ETF are American Waterworks Inc., Xylem, Danaher, uh, Jabarit, Halma. So a lot of the same same companies, even Algonquin, Pentair, uh, essentially utilities. And if we look at the breakdown, it's mostly in the U.S., the U.K., Switzerland, France, Canada, China, Sweden, Japan, Korea, and the Netherlands. So the nice thing is that this one is global and diversified, but as a global option, it definitely beats PIO because the management expense ratio is about not 0. 0.09% less, uh, and it's performed a lot better over time. So um, if you're not in Canada, but you want that global exposure, definitely think you'll be able to find something similar. Uh, try to find something tracking the S&P Global Water Index, uh, and that has a lower MER than this 0.75 right here. But uh, anyways, that is it for this video, everyone. I hope you found this useful. Uh, do you invest in any of these ETFs, or are there any water ETFs that you've been tracking that you think are better? Please let me know. Uh, in the comments, we can have a discussion because I just want to help people find the best investments where they're going to keep the most money because the fee is as low as possible and they return the best over time so that we can all get wealthy together. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any other episodes uh, and make sure you hit the like button. I really appreciate it and I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you learned something, please send people to check out this channel just so that they can develop a better understanding over time. And again, we can all make better financial decisions and make the world a better place by allocating our money you know, wisely, properly, and sustainably over time. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. We'll see you next time.